This video clip is about Bluetooth GPS's, but it will be segmented into three videos because it takes 15 minutes to get through it all. Now before I actually go into Bluetooth GPS's, I'd like to explain what Bluetooth is. Bluetooth is a means for two devices or more to communicate wirelessly. Unlike Wi-Fi, Bluetooth devices do not transfer data that needs to be secured. For example, from your mobile phone to your Bluetooth headset, from a laptop to a GPS, laptop to a camera, or laptop to a printer. Even pocket PCs, of course, have got Bluetooth capability. Now, this first segment is about uh, the standard Bluetooth GPSs. I'll be talking about variations, including data logging units, uh, ones with solar panels and ones with uh, data, uh, data card slots in them as well. Now, in my hand I have um, a model that uses one of the two, uh, two um, engines that are available on the market, or currently the most common um, uh, GPS engines, Surf3 and MediaTek MTK3-32. Uh, uh, they're the two most common GPS engines on the market, so much so that even Garmin are selling GPS's, the handheld GPS's with uh, MTK32 GPS engine and Surf3 GPS engines. The difference between the two uh, engines uh, are that the Surf3 would run at around about 75 milliamps per hour, MediaTek's MTK32 around about 35 milliamps per hour. Sensitivity tracking capability is practically identical. Um, because the MTK32 it uses less power, that means for the same standard Nokia battery size you get twice as much uh, usage out of them. Instead of the standard 11 hours from a Surf 3 uh, with the battery like this you'll get around about 23 hours um, from a battery of this size in an MTK32 based GPS, um, Bluetooth GPS. Now uh, the first model I'll show you is the MTK32 based GPS and uh, it's the Holix M, uh, M1000 as you can see, this uh, particular unit is, um, it would be the typical uh, size that you'll find out there. There's a GlobalSat uh, BT359 a model, which is a, uh, slightly longer, but overall, um, uh, volume-wise, it'd be practically the same, but uses a Surf 3 engine. Now, this particular model will give you around about 23 hours of usage time, whilst its um, competitor, uh, the 359, Similar size, similar battery size will only give you around about 11. Uh, this isn't all that a big seller. The only reason why it sells is when people spe specifically want that model. Now, um, also, um, as a point here, a lot of the GPSs out there do have replaceable batteries, or replaceable rechargeable batteries. In the case of the Holix and the uh, Global Set, there, they use a standard Nokia phone battery. Now we've got a little fella here, so little, look at size comparison, half the size. This actually uses, um, this is the uh, Holix um, M, uh, GPS uh, 240, uh, GPS Slim 240. It uses, uh, has an internal battery, uh, not replaceable, but rechargeable, um, hence the size. Uh, it doesn't need to fit, uh, have a casing to fit the actual battery. It actually basically um, build around the battery in this case. Now I've shown you the um, Holix units, the BT359S and also we have got the Haycom HI406BT okay and one final model, oh uh, no sorry there's another model, the Transsystem iBlue 737 and that one uses MTK32, you'll notice it's, it'll say on there 25 hours usage time. And then this one, this is probably the, the, the biggest seller I know of anyway out there in, the, in Australia or the world is the GlobalSat BT338. It uses a Surf3 engine. Uh, it also has a rather uh, an extra large battery in it which will give you, instead of the standard 11 hours, it'll give you uh, up to 17 hours of usage. Um, um, battery uh, battery usage. Now they have brought out a new um, uh, surf engine called the Surf LT. It's not mass produced at the moment. In other words, uh, in the case of Global Set, they've only got one model, which I'll talk about later, uh, that uses the LT version. The LT version has the same current usage as the MTK32, meaning around about 35 milliamp hours. So instead of only being 17, this is around about 25 hour usage time. 
Now, another model I want to show you that is uh, a standard Bluetooth, but it's not standard in the way it's um, uh, designed, and that is using this cradle. Now, this cradle is designed to work with uh, pocket PCs or Nokia phones by slotting in there your specific connector to suit your particular um, PDA or mobile phone. Uh, that currently Haycom who manufactured this, this is the HI701, in particular the Bluetooth version, um, only accepts Nokia phones. Now as you can see here, this is a the, the GPS uh, side of the cradle. Uh, it is a Bluetooth version, it is a non-Bluetooth version for um, uh, models such as the Dell and HP. However, HP can still use this particular unit. Why Hacom produced a Bluetooth version is because some PDA, PDAs out there don't have a base connector uh, in them. So um, you can, um, well, appropriate base connector with um, data transfer uh, in there. But this particular Bluetooth unit can be used on any pocket PC or not your phone that's got Bluetooth capability. Also note, it is not uh, compact flash or CF card um, design, its own design. Now, the other thing too about this particular unit is that you can fold the, um, the um, guide in, the guide into the cradle, and turn it into a, what do you call, a mouse, a USB mouse GPS by hooking in a cable into that um, miniature USB port. It's also got external antenna capability. Uh, a lot of the um, new Bluetooth GPS don't have um, the external antenna capabilities. Uh, you can use a re-radiating antenna, as you'll see in my other video, that um, it's not overly necessary these days. Uh, in terms of uh, standard Bluetooth GPS, is it practically it in um, the different models, uh, apart from the fact that they may have um, a data port, a miniature USB data port. It may also be um, power and data, or in, in a lot of cases, just straight power uh, for recharging um, purposes. And some may or may not have external antenna capability as well. And that would be pretty much it for the Bluetooth, a Bluetooth GPS.